Hello, 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 believers in Elohim and everybody under the sound of my voice. This is Elder Octavian. I wanted to come to you today and actually teach on a message entitled The Power of the Belief System. How powerful is our belief system? Um, and we're going to actually go through that today. Um, you know, before coming to this ministry, you know, a lot of times we just said things wasn't that serious. It wasn't that serious. It's, you know, it's not a big deal. But once coming in and actually learning about the belief system and how these things can actually hinder our life and our lifestyle, our walk with the Father, the things that uh, the power that manifests in our lives, what we allow Elohim to do in our lives, you learn that it's really, really important to guard your heart, you know, for out of it flows the issues of life. Uh, if you let things, you know, the heart, especially talking about your mind, you know, um, your, 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 your mind, you know, <laughs> you can basically get that. Um, guarding that, we want to make sure that nothing in there is coming in that is up against the word, you know, that is going to be downloaded into our storage and our mind to what points to where like certain things come up, certain issues come up, you just react, you know in uh that belief that we have or that idea that we have because it's so rooted in there and then those are things that we have to uh humble ourselves and allow the holy spirit to actually come in and um help us uh get rid of those things but first to get rid of those things we must actually know it's wrong uh repent and uh what repent means is actually to take those things and actually get rid of them, you know, actually take the tree out the ground, burn it and be in a situation to where that's something that I'm never going back to, you know, so I want to get into this message, but before this, like the message, you know, share it with those who will appreciate it if you know anyone, and let's go ahead and get into this, the power of the belief system by Elder Octavian, yours truly, so <laughs> We'll go ahead and get into this. So the power of the belief system. So first, I want to start off with some scriptures that really show you um, how powerful the belief system can be um, from a good aspect and from a bad aspect. So we'll start off with the bad aspect because we like to end things on a on a on a great note, on a good note, positive note. So um, Matthew, Yahoo, Matthew. 13, 55 through 58. And so I'm using the, the TS 2009 or the scriptures 2009 version. And the reason why I'm using this is because it actually keeps things uh, like the original names, like we're going to see right here. Uh, Mary, it, it actually says Miriam because that's her original Hebrew name. So it keeps a lot of things in the original Hebrew context. So that's why we content uh, in context. So we that's why we actually like to use this particular uh, translation. <clears throat> so it says, is this not the son of the carpenter? Is not his mother called Miriam and his brothers, um, Jacob and Yosef and Shimon and uh, Yehuda? So they're talking about Yeshua or, you know, what some call Jesus right here. And his sisters, are they not all with us? Where then did this one get all of this? Um, and they stumbled at him, so they got offended. But Yeshua said to them, a prophet is not unappreciated except in his own country and in his own house. And he did not do any miracles, many miracles there because of their unbelief. So because of their unbelief, because of their offense, you know, see, offense is something that can get in the way of Elohim working in our lives. You know, they got offended at him because they just had this belief that, look, this like this. We seen this man grow up. We know him. He grew up here. We know his brother, sister, mama, uncle, auntie, cousin, all of them. We know all of them. We know where you come from. But yet you coming to us like, you know, everything. So it put them in a position to where they were offended because it's like, how can you say this to us? You came from where we came from. You lived, it. you you were, you know, even though Yeshua didn't live like them, but it's like you was around all this stuff just like we were. How you going to come up to me and then try to tell me anything? And because of that, off, like, because in the scripture, we seen truth come from, a, you know, come from a donkey, you know. <laughs> so, you know, because of that offense, it, it just stopped them from being able to accept what he said. So it kept them in a state of unbelief. And from that unbelief, the word himself cannot work any miracles in their lives. So 
that's one situation or one example of how um, unbelief is so powerful and how it can stop and how it can stop you from having or attaining what the Lord has for you or what Yahweh has for you, you know, um, even um, meeting your destiny all the all the way from the smallest blessings, the things that we receive every day that just makes us be like, man, Elohim is so good. He cares about the small things all the way to the big things like meeting your destiny, you know, dying empty, knowing that you've done everything that you're supposed to. Unbelief can stop you from attaining those things. So um, we'll go ahead and do an example of something great that happened because of um, of a belief system. So Matthew 8, 5 through 13, bear with me. I know it looks <laughs> like a lot, but it says, and when Yeshua had entered a uh, um Kephar Nahum, uh I'm probably pronounced I'm I'm slaughtering that name forgive me a captain came to him appealing to him saying master my servant is lying in the house paralyzed uh grievously tortured and Yeshua said to him I shall come and heal him and the captain answering said master I am not worthy that you should come under my roof but only say a word and my servant will be healed. For I, I too am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to the, another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. And when Yeshua heard, he marveled and said to those who followed, truly I say to you, not even in Yisrael, among the whole, among the whole <laughs> country of, of, of Israel, have I found such great belief. I, and I say to you that many shall come from east to west and sit down with Abraham and uh, Yitzhak and Jacob in the region of the heavens. But the sons of the rain shall be cast out into other darkness, outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. And Yeshua said to the captain, go as you have believed. So it shall be done for you. And his servant was healed at that hour. So we see here's a story of um, this captain whose servant was sick. And he basically told Yeshua, he was like, look, I, this, this authority that you're walking in and this power that you have, I, I, I understand this because I have a level of authority. So I don't even have to be in places. You know, if my word is just spoken and it gets to the people, it's done, you know, so. You don't even need to come into my home. I know if once you once you speak, man, that's powerful. Once you speak, once your word is just, I mean, if your word is just spoken, my goodness, you know, the, the, the things are going to be done. The man will be healed, you know, and from his belief, you know, from his belief, his servant was healed. And that's just that's just powerful. Just from if we could just believe what the word says, you know. If we could just believe what it says, knowing that Elohim is going to do what he said he's going to do, knowing that he's a man that he shouldn't lie, you know, another son of man that he shouldn't repent, knowing that he's faithful to his covenant. When he said that he'll take care of us as long as we obey his laws and we walk in his righteousness, his word is going to do what it set out to do. It won't return into a void, you know, let me not get too, too right. <laughs> too riled up but it's it's just powerful you know if we, if we could if we just believe what his word says you know so that's a perfect example of what happens when we have our belief system in proper order you know so let's go on a little bit further and we'll actually go over the six stages of conformity so this is basically going to show you how we actually became basically who we are. Why do we live the way that we do? Why do we do the things that we do? Why do we believe the things that we believe? And it all works in this six, this six, these six stages of conformity. These six steps are how you can actually understand the lifestyle that you actually live, you know. So one is a precept. A precept is an original thought that comes from an idea yeah, an original thought that comes from an idea, uh, that's a precept. It's a source. I'm sorry. I, I, 
the word precept is actually in the definition for precept. That threw me out for a second. But yeah, a precept is an original thought that comes from a, an original idea. It's basically the source, you know, the source of the matter. So a, a two concept, a concept is a conceived precept. A conceived precept is a concept, the original idea of the thought. So an accepted, you know, um, sept means a uh, thought and con means to accept, you know. So uh, conviction, your conviction follows the concept. So your, uh, your conviction is your strong attachment to whatever that concept is. You know, you strongly hold on to it. You're hooked to it. For example, a person can be, you know, let's just say you go to a party and people are smoking weed. And they come up to you and say, hey, man, you know, why don't you take a hit of this, man? It's some good stuff. You know, if you just strongly believe in yourself that, look, uh, drugs are bad. They make you sick. They go kill you eventually and all this other stuff. You hold on to that strongly. That's something that you just like your, 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 your emotions are tied to. You strongly believe this. You know, you have a conviction of it. You're strongly you have a strong. um attachment to that belief you're gonna say no and that's what a conviction uh, a conviction is like you're convicted of it you can't go against that that belief that you have you know it's almost it's just one with you you know it, it just be like disrespecting yourself that's your conviction so four is your belief system your belief system is your set of convictions you know the multiple things that you have convictions of you know, that work together to make your belief system. Your ideology is the system of ideas you accept as being true, you know. So then you have your philosophy. Your philosophy, philosophy means, uh, philo means love, and, you know, uh, it means the love of your thoughts, the love of the thought. And that philosophy, it becomes your lifestyle. You live a certain way. So, you know, uh, let's, let me give an example. So. An example would be something like, let's just say your precept is that candy is uh, candy is bad for you. Candy is bad. Sugar is bad for you. So that's the precept. That's the original thought you have. When you were growing up, your parents told you that candy is bad. You know, so that's the precept that you got from your parents, that candy is bad. So concept, you receive that thought. OK, mom, I understand. You know, I get what you're saying. And because you believe what your mom tells you, you know, you believe what your what your parents tell you. They don't they wouldn't, you know, lead you in the wrong direction. You convicted of it. That's something that I strongly believe. My my parents told me this. You know, I just I, I just stand on this. My parents told me this. That's just something I'm just I'm just not going to do. That's just not who I am. You know, then that. Then that, and from that conviction, that goes into that becomes a part of your belief system, your overall part of your overall thought. You know that okay, candy is a bad thing. I need to stay away from all candy. You know I don't need to consume candy. I'm going to tell other people not to consume candy and all that other stuff because it has sugar in it. So then we we go to your ideology. So it comes to a point to where like. You have multiple things that you start to believe based off that original precept that you had. So let's just say, for example, it's like don't drink candy, don't eat candy because it has a lot of sugar and the sugar is bad for you. OK, then somebody was like, well, you know, next thing you know, you're just like, well, I don't drink sodas because sodas have sugar in them that bad for you. You know, I don't eat a lot of foods that have a lot of sugar in it because sugar is bad for you. I don't do, I don't consume this, or I don't take that, or I don't do these things. I don't do that also because candy is bad because it has sugar in it. And since sugar is bad, I'm not going to do all these other things. See, you see the system of ideas, the ideology you start to have that centers around that original precept that you got of sugar is bad for you. And candy is bad for you because of the sugar that's in it. Now, next thing you know, you're not eating soda. You're not you're not eating chips. You're not eating this. You're not eating that. All because of sugar. It all comes from that original precept. 
And then from your philosophy, from those ideas that you love, you you you're convicted of them. You strongly believe them. People see it in your lifestyle is just like, man, I've, I've never seen him really eat any like candy. He's always eating like, you know, healthy foods, this and this and this because of your belief system. You know, now they see it in your lifestyle, you know, all throughout you because of an original precept that you had from what that your parents gave you. So I hope that, you know, that that's a simple way to break it down. And I hope you can understand that. So that's how ideas are formed, you know, and that's why a lot of times you'll find yourself, you see you're doing something that you don't know that you're just like, why do I do this? Why do I do this? You know, you have to go through these process, this process, these six stages of conformity, and you will see this is why I believe the things that I do. This is why I'm doing the things that I do, you know, so we can all take ourselves through this process and get to the root of the matter, you know, the source of the matter of why we believe the things that we believe. So it is paramount that the precepts we become convicted, that we become convicted of all of the kingdom ideology. Or you have a taint, or you're gonna have a tainted belief system. A little leaven leavens the whole lump, you know. So we want to make sure that all the things that we believe in are coming from a kingdom ideology, you know. That there aren't ideas or beliefs in us that, when it comes to walking in the Father's ways and living in His lifestyle, that there's ideas that we have that, if we let them stay in there long enough, you'll go. It will go through that six stages of conformity process, and then next thing you know, you're carrying out things in your life that um, the Father isn't pleased with, and even in your mind, you know, we have to make sure that we're protecting our thoughts and that we bring any thought that we have in order because Elohim cares about the thought also. He wants to mind, body, and soul and conform to love Elohim with all your, your mind, heart, soul, body, all of that, you know? So he wants it all, you know, like that song said, he wants it all. Love me with your whole heart. He wants it all today. So, um, and that's a true statement. So we have to make sure <clears throat> that we have all these thoughts clean because it will interfere with our walk and Elohim's not pleased with it. So we could go on to our next slide. And I really hope you guys understand that six stages of conformity. So, you know, if you don't really, really seek the Holy Spirit on it. So let's see. So we'll go on to how important is it to have a kingdom belief system? You know, now you say Octavian, Elder Octavian, that I'm supposed to make sure that all of my thoughts and things like that are conformed to the kingdom belief system. But how important is it really? You know, I, I think it's OK that I can think a little bit of this. I think it's OK that I can think a little bit of that. So, well, we'll see. So going to uh, Marco, so Mark 4, 13 through 20, it says, and he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How then shall you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. These then are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. And when they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. And likewise, these are the ones sown on rocky places who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy and they have no root in themselves, but are short lived. Then when pressure or persecution arises because of the word, immediately they stumble and others are sown among thorns. These are they who hear the word and the worries of this age and the deceit of riches and the desires for other matters enter in and choke the word and it becomes fruitless. And those sown on good soil are those who hear the word, accept it and bear fruit, some 30 fold, some 16 and some 100. So we, right here, it's saying having other ideas over the word stops it from being effective in your life. So if we want the word to be effective in our lives, we want to receive the benefits of the word in our lives. If we want life in our lives, we can't have things that are above the word that we allow to take the place of the word in our lives. And we see here in this scripture that there were many reasons, there were many things that people chose to hold on to, to believe, to be convicted of over the word. So we got the ones on rocket places. Um, 
they immediately receive it with joy, but they have no root in themselves and are short lived. Then when pressure or persecution arises because of the word, immediately they stumble. So here we have a situation where, you know, people are allowing pressure or persecution, you know, the attacks that come to you for believing on um, what it is that you believe, you let those emotions or that persecution or that pressure take precedence over the word. You hold, you're, you're more so leaning more towards that side of holding on to, uh, to those things more than you're holding on to the word. If you were holding on to the word when that pressure and persecution came, you would stand on the word and say, look, I hold on to this firmly. I believe in this, you know, and come, you know, hell or high water, I'm not changing. You know, that that's the word is the side that I'm leaning on, you know. So from being more susceptible to that press or prosecution because you have no root in yourselves, in yourself, you know, you're someone that, you know, most times this sounds like a person who's just really there for like a good time, you know, like a good shout, like a word that makes them feel good. But then when, you know, it's, it's time for you to be tested of who you what you're really about. Let's see who whose side you really on. Then you're folding. And then others are sown among thorns. These are those that hear the word and the worries of this age and the deceit of riches and the desire for other matters enter in and choke the word. So, you know, the words of this age, what they say nowadays, well, you know, I, I, I got to go give me a check. I got to go make me some money, you know. Well, you know, I, I'm too old not to have a girlfriend. You know, I, I need to be going and dating somebody, you know, stuff like that. You know, you just got that word from your pastor or whoever it is that told you um, that was going to help you, you know, beat this thing. But still yet you decided that, you know, you was worried about your degree. You know, it could be your degree. You know, the word comes telling you to lean and depend on him. But, you know, the world system say, hey, you got to go to college. Well, did the father say you need to go to college? That's stuff we need to ask ourselves. So then, you know, the ones that sown on good soil, those are the ones that look when they hear the word, they accept it. They want it. You know, hey, look, you know, I, I want everything the father has for me. And then it bears fruit within their lives, you know. So. And then from that, we could come with true trees of righteousness and people see our fruit. It's just like uh, regular trees. You know, people come up to the tree, not for the tree. They come up to the tree because they want to consume other fruit. So a lot of times people will see the fruit that you bear and that's enough influence for you to help impact their lives. So all this stuff is important. So Hebrews um, pronounced Ebram uh, 11 and 6 says, but without belief, it is impossible to please Elohim. For he comes to El for he who comes to Elohim has to believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. So here we get we have another scripture showing you how important it is that we must have a proper belief system. You know, if we want the father to do stuff for us. We just can't be in no position where it's like, well, you know, Lord, I'm here. Somebody told me you will bless me. So, you know, I'm just trying to see, <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to see if I can get this blessing. That's that's just not how this show going to run. You know, the father doesn't work like that. You must truly believe in the things that he can do for you. You must truly believe that he is, you know, and that he can do the things that he can do, you know. And without that, you, you, it's not going to please him. He's not going to be able to do anything for you. So we must rid ourselves of every thought against the word to clean, to cleanse the belief system. So Corinthians bet, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6 says, for the weapons we fight with are not fleshly, but mighty in Elohim for overthrowing strongholds, overthrowing reasonings and every high matter that exhausts itself against the knowledge of Elohim, taking captive every thought to make it obedient to the Messiah and being ready to punish all disobedience where your obedience is complete. So you remember when Yeshua was in the wilderness and he was in a position where he was saying, uh, well, the enemy was coming to him and giving him these uh, thoughts and telling him like, look, you know, you hungry out here, you know, why don't you turn these stones to bread? And he would rebuke them. And he said, it is written. And he told him what the word said. His belief system was sitting in the word to where he wasn't going to go against the word because of what somebody else said is considered a good idea or the better thing or, you know, what's the more right thing what the world tells you that you need to do, 
You know, that that's just not Yeshua didn't, you know, Yeshua made sure he stuck and stood on the word. So we have to make sure that when we have thoughts within our mind that comes up and we know the father didn't place that thought there. When we know the father's true character, reputation and who he is, when you have certain thoughts, you know, like that's not of the father. And we have to make sure that we rebuke those and speak the word against it to make sure that we're letting the, uh, the enemy know and we know ourselves that whatever place that the enemy was trying to get into with that word so he could plant that seed is already a, it's already a seed there that that word the, the seed of the word is already in that spot and the enemy is not going to get the ground within our mind so so we can go on to the next scripture um Philippian or Philippians 4 and 8 says, for the rest, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is righteous, whatever is clean, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report, if there is any uprightness and if there is any praise, think of on these things. So we have to make sure within our mind, there's, you know, a lot of people, and especially in today's days, we, we're in an information overload, especially with social media. We have to make sure that we're checking our thoughts at all times. There's so many thoughts that can run through your head. And you have to make sure that you're checking those because we need to keep a mind. Like I said before, the father, he wants you to love him with your whole heart, you know, your whole mind, your whole soul. We have to make sure that the thoughts that are running through your head are like him at all times. We constantly meditate on stuff, meditate on stuff, meditate on stuff. There are laws that are taking effect when you constantly meditate on stuff. You know, um, what does the scripture say? Um, oh, I can't, the scripture is escaping me right now, but oh, yeah, faith comes by um, hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. So, um, you know, faith is faith is more is also a lifestyle. You know, faith is also a corresponding action with your belief. So if you're constantly meditating on stuff, meditating on stuff, meditating on stuff, meditating on stuff, you'll find yourself carrying out or being just like those thoughts that you're constantly meditating on. You know, um, a lot of people will tell you a lot of times when they commit violent crimes and things like that, you know, against someone, they tell you they, they were thinking about what that person did to them or how they hurt them over and over and over and over. And they just couldn't get it out their mind until they got to a point to where they feel like they just had to release it in some form or fashion. They had to carry out what they were thinking, you know, the, what those thoughts made them um, want to do. They had to carry it out. So we have to make sure that what, what we're meditating on, you know, because it'll lead from those principles that you're practicing or meditating. It's going to really, it's going to lead to a corresponding action, you know? So we could go on to, Okay, Proverbs 23 and 7, and I missed the Hebrew word, but I believe it's uh, mislay. Yeah, mislay is Proverbs. So for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Our thoughts help keep us in Elohim's image. So image is, uh, Elohim's image is his character, you know, to be just like him. Elohim created us in his likeness and his image. In the beginning, if we make sure that we keep meditating on his thoughts, we'll be just like him. The father doesn't have evil thoughts, wicked thoughts, you know. And that's just not who he is. That's just not in his character. So, you know, the things that you're thinking, you're constantly meditating on, that's it's like so is he. Is it like I said before, you're eventually gonna carry those thoughts out that you keep meditating on. You know, so we we, we got to make sure we're taking this stuff serious and it's not nothing that we're just sitting here like, oh, OK, you know, that don't matter too much. You know, I ain't got to say nothing about it. And that was something that I know for myself was uh, one of the tests that I've had because I was a person that, you know, it was hard to really just say the things that were on your mind. You know, it was really, really hard. Like if you felt like, you know, upset, mad, someone, you know, kind of did something that really affected you, you would try to keep it in on the inside. But keeping stuff in on the inside, it just keeps you in a state of you. You're just thinking about what happened. You're thinking about what happened, you know, um, and you constantly meditating on the stuff like that. It's going to eventually lead to something, something that's 
unrighteous if you keep thinking on unrighteous things, you know. So we have to make sure that we are getting those things out. And that was a lesson that I had to learn in, the, in my faith walk of just like, you know, if there's if there the things that you're made, meditating on, stop it. You know, get it out. And, and people who, you know, are real, real, you know, highly uh, intelligent and things like that. There are people who really, really think a lot, you know, but it's not good all the time to think a lot, you know. So we can go on to our next slide. So um, with this last thing, I want to I want to go over things that we have in our society today um, that try to shape your belief system. The, the things that happen, you know, around you, um, among your friends, your family, whatever, the, the things that try to shape your belief system, that try to plant ideas in your head and make you think certain ways. So one is our culture. You know, culture is made by laws, you know, for example, here in America, we have uh, laws that dictate uh, holidays and what you must like, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas and all that other stuff. So really from the culture and the laws that America says, they try to normalize certain things. They try to say things are OK when you set them certain things in the law. But a lot of times those things are OK and they don't agree with the things that the things that Elohim want for us. So your culture is thing like, for example, we, we live in a society today in a culture today that's very sexually inundated. You know, it's people say it's OK to have multiple sex partners. It's OK to be sexually uh, to sexually experiment. It's OK to do this and it's OK to do that. That's a part of the culture. Those are things that, you know, a culture is a place where certain ideas, behaviors, patterns are cultivated that they have free reign to grow. And there are certain things in cultures that people will say, hey, these are things that we don't accept, you know? So in different cultures, they allow, they shun different things, they promote different things. But we have to make sure that all these things align with the kingdom culture. You have different ethnic groups have different cultural backgrounds. But we have to make sure that, you know, um uh jamaicans don't live the same way irish people would they don't have the same uh beliefs they don't have they don't they don't live the same they don't have the same things that they glorify but we have to all make sure that these things are shaping our belief system to go against um elohim so two is family um lucas luke 14 26 says if anyone comes to me and does not hate this word hate means love less um, his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters and his own life too. He is unable to be my taught one or my disciple. So this scripture is basically letting us know that family, you know, we have, we, we all have families that had certain things that they believe that they tried to instill in you, that they wanted for you, that they tried to give to you. And religion is really one of them. You know, a lot of families, especially among black communities and stuff like that, and among other communities, I'm not just saying it's just black, but uh, they give you religion. You know, and a lot of times, uh, well, <laughs> a good amount of the times, the religion that you're getting is not something that if, when you dive deep into it, a lot of these things truly aren't what Elohim wants for us, you know. So we really have to make sure that we check these things because these are things that are trying to come and shape your belief system, you know, to lead you into certain ways that's trying to shepherd you and lead you and guide you and dictate your life. You know, so like once again, going through those six days in conformity, make sure you check those precepts, those original ideas of certain things, you know, these family traditions that we have, because you might find that it doesn't align with the precepts of Elohim. So three is media. I, I, I think this one is really <laughs> just self-explanatory. You know, you cut on the TV today or social media. Everybody is trying to get you to believe their belief system, especially when you cut on news networks. They, you know, they have agendas to uh, put out a certain, you know, sway you to a certain opinion, a certain side. I mean, especially, you know, you have liberal Republican type networks that more so lean their message to where it's really not even 
uh, unbiased anymore. You know, they they try to put their own swing on things. So, you know, you have to truly make sure that, you know, so, okay, news is one example. And then if you go on social media, such as like Twitter, Facebook and stuff like that, you're bombarded with people trying to give you different beliefs on different topics and things like that. Some some calls or, you know, something like that, that people are trying to sell you on so that you can follow, you know, their certain lifestyle. You know, you have people that care a lot for animals, you know, so they want you to come to their side of beliefs, you know, of their ideas of how you should live your life when it comes to uh, coexisting with animals. You have people that try to tell you, you know, what you should believe when it comes to people's sexual preferences and things like that. We have to make sure things like that are aligning with the kingdom ideology, the kingdom beliefs, the kingdom precepts, because media is definitely one of the major tools loading people with information to try to get you to believe what they believe. So for we have educational systems. So, man, in the educational system, I mean, we we all know we we all had the history books that told you about, you know, Christopher Columbus and, you know, all the all the wars and different things that, that America did, you know, throughout whatever, whatever thing throughout the history of America. And we go back and we realize a lot of those things are false. You know, nowadays they're trying to scrub, scrub some things from existence when it comes to certain things in the school districts, like, for example, when it comes to uh, matters of like slavery, you know, that happened in America, they're trying to twist some of the beliefs or get uh, the twist some of the truths or try to get the whole thing out of there in general. You know, a lot of uh, the educational system today is just really, I mean, this country was founded by entrepreneurs, you know, so entrepreneurs need people to work their, work their jobs, but at the same time, you can't have somebody incompetent in there. So if you really pay attention to the educational system, they're really just teaching people how to be workers. I remember when I was growing up in school, there was no talking about entrepreneurship, period. It was just cookie cutter. Everybody go to college and get a job. You know, that's what it was. You know, well, they'll say a career, but, you know, that's what it was. So they're trying to shape your belief system in a certain area, but you have to make sure that these things align with Elohim. Is these the things that he wants you to do? So Romans 12 and 2 says, uh, Roman Yim, the Hebrew word for it, uh, do not be conformed to this world system. You know, like the world, the world system, the way the world does things, the way they believe things, the way they carry themselves, the way they walk, the way they talk, the way they think, the way they dress. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you prove what is good, what is that good and well-pleasing and perfect desire Elohim. So a lot of people like to do that, that first part, but not the second part, so that you prove what is the good. There's nothing good other than what aligns with the Father. You see good in the scripture when Elohim was creating um, everything in the beginning, when he was doing the seven days, when he was creating those things within the seven days, when he created them, and he saw that those things were functioning in his original design, he said they were good. That's what good is. Good isn't what man says is good. Somebody, you know, lives their life. They're donating money to charity. They're doing this. They're doing that. That's not, that's not good. Good is not what man says is good. We have to know what Elohim is. What Elohim says is good. The well-pleasing and perfect desire of Elohim. We only get that from the Holy Spirit. We're only going to get that from, from the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. You know, what his good and perfect will is. You know, what he truly desires for us. We're not going to get that from believing the things that the world tells us that how we're supposed to live our life. You know, a lot of times in America, it was go to school, get a job. You know, go to school, get your degree, get a job, you know, get you a car, get you that house with the white picket fence and all that other stuff. But if you truly dig deep into that, a lot of that is just getting you in debt. But the father doesn't want debt from us, you know. So and not saying that, you know, you can't take out loans and stuff like that. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying you have to just check these things that the world is basically telling you of what you should do. Hey, this is what everybody should do. Now, when you're telling me that, you basically telling me kind of like what my purpose is, 
what my plan is for my life. That only comes from Elohim. We can't allow people to take the place of Elohim in our lives and them basically telling us what we should and shouldn't be doing. All these things form our belief system. And what I'm trying to get to you today is all these things, you check what you believe, check what you think. All these things that we just believe just because we believe, check them. Where did they come from? Did they come from the father? Because we'll find like, you know, a lot of a lot of people think <clears throat> we're just talking about like, oh, well, I'm not sinning. I'm not having sex before marriage. I'm not I'm not cussing. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. We, we talk about more than that. The father is interested in every single part of your life. Every single part of your life. You know, if the father tells you that, hey, you're going like uh, my plan for you is for you to be a farmer um doing this and doing that with your career or this is uh where i want you to use your gifts so you can make money uh to use as a tool to continue my kingdom influence here in the earth you're sitting here believing you need to be a doctor or some type of lawyer or something because the world told you you need a job that make at least six figures for you to be successful we have to make sure that we're checking this stuff you know, the father's interested in every part of our lives. If we want to know what it is as, as us as humans, what we're supposed to do, you have to go to your creator. Every single thing that you have in your house, whether it's from your ceiling fan, whether it is from your mirror, whether it's your bed, whether it's your dresser, I'm just looking at things that's around me. <laughs> every single thing has a purpose. And the thing that gave it its purpose is its creator, its manufacturer. Purpose is implanted in a certain thing by its creator not by the person who isn't the creator it definitely not the creation telling the creator or what it is that they want to do so we really have to make sure that we're keeping these things in check man because we could be off and have the purest intentions but we don't want to be in a situation where we're the father saying your good deeds what you think is good deeds to me is nothing but filthy rags i created you for this purpose Next thing you know, you off doing this. And it's because you accepted some other ideas over uh, my ideas. While at the same time, like we're talking about that and then going into your spiritual walk, the things that Elohim wants for you, you know, the, the impact that you can have in people's lives and stuff like that won't happen if you don't believe, you know, your overall, you know, being transformed. You know, from the way that the world has made us before we came into being born again, we have to make sure that we're exchanging ideas or we'll stay, we'll steady be in situations where we're stagnant in our growth with Elohim. So that's uh, the teaching for this time. I want to thank you guys for who joined and who stayed all the way through listening to this message. We really, really appreciate you. Once again, this is Elder Octavian. It's been such a blessing and an honor and a privilege to be amongst um, everybody today, actually giving um, some word to Elohim. As I always say, I'm just so happy to be in my purpose. You know, before Elohim, it was wandering life aimlessly for a purpose. And I just really, really appreciate you guys being here today. Um, thank you once again, and shalom.